Good afternoon and welcome to another Impact Insights. I'm delighted to have with me today Louisa Ritchie, who is Key Account Manager, and I've got Giovanna Stretfield, who is Business Development Manager for Fleet Mortgages. Welcome, ladies. Thank you for uh, coming and uh, giving us a presentation. Thank you. We are one of the approved packages for Fleet, and what um, the ladies are going to go through today is exactly how Fleet um, can help you and your customers um, with regards to the specialist sector and regarding buy to let. So if I hand over to you guys, um, to do the presentation. In the meantime, if you do have any questions, we'll have a question and answer session in about 20 minutes time. Right at the bottom of the screen there, you've got a Q&A, so please do post your questions as we go and we'll try and answer some of them live. And if not, we'll do certainly do some at the end of the presentation and go from there. So if I can hand over to you two to take over, um, the floor is yours and I'll be back shortly. Okay, thanks very much, Dale. And firstly, thank you to Impact for the opportunity to present today. Um, as Dale mentioned, I'm Louisa, I'm the Key Account Manager for Fleet Mortgages. So I'm responsible for managing our strategic partnerships with our key accounts and network and distributor partners. I joined Fleet Team in uh, October last year in full lockdown. And I think this uh, slide here just, uh, um, just basically dictates just how 2020 and 2021 have summed up um, with everyone bulk buying. Um, so as relationships are really, really important in the industry to build trust, improve knowledge and increase business, it's vital to stay in touch with our key partners so we can share and build on the strategic plans to what the, to, of what the future might hold. Um, so during the presentation today, we'll be looking at the current, I'm going to talk about the current state of the market, um, highlighting some of fleet successes over the last 12 months. And then I'm going to pass you over to Giovanna, who joins me today. And she's just going to go through just how fleet mortgages can assist you and your clients, um, whether they're individuals, whether they're limited companies, or seeking finance for HMOs and multi-unit blocks. So where are we now? So we're all working from home um, and with people spending more time at home, uh, many are looking for more space, whether that's outdoor space and um, living next to a park. So landlords priorities have changed and location priorities have changed um, and land, uh, landlords are seeing more demand from tenants in this area. There's plenty of funding in place and mortgage availability has improved strongly. So we're in a really, really good place and lenders are continuing to gain confidence. So mortgage approvals have even hit a 13 year high and that growth has allowed home buyers and investors to purchase homes and take advantage of the stamp duty land tax holiday. Um, and if you want evidence of um, greater confidence, look no further than the capital markets and new lender entrants. Um, it's pointed out that it's a very highly competitive market, but lenders in the specialist buy to let market have known each other for quite a long time and that gives mutual respect. So we're all essentially benefiting from that competition. So the truth of the matter is, is that the sector works best when many players are thriving, particularly when it comes to investment in residential backed mortgage securitizations. Um, and of course, the ability to secure funding to lend in the first place. So funders want to see exit strategies paid, played out to successful conclusion. We've adapted and as we are all doing this at the moment um, to methods of engagement of Zooms and Teams and we've, that's quickly emerged out of nowhere and now we make use of it every day. We've announced before Christmas and uh, Gio will go through um, all the criteria enhancements that we announced before Christmas and that's given us greater flexibility um, to pass on to landlords. Um, and it's just important for us as a lender to regularly review our criteria and ensure it's fit for purpose and continues to work in this ever-changing environment. One important thing is we've continued to main our, maintain our great service. So DIP referrals, um, applications and document uploads are all being reviewed within 24 hours or the same day. You can talk directly to our underwriters about your case and you've got access to the right people at the right time throughout the process. So that's with people that understand your business and can help no matter how complex your query is. Um, we aim to give a quick answer, whether, that, whether a case fits or not, and um, validate all the documents as soon as possible. And what that's done is it's resulted in fleet mortgages having their best few months ever on applications in the run-up to Christmas, and it, that has continued throughout 2021 so far. 
So just a few highlights um, uh, that 2020 came for, for fleet mortgages. So we've had a lot more broker firms, new, new firms as well, place mortgages with fleet up on, up on business from 2019. And despite lockdown, Fleet issued 604 million of mortgage offers. That's up again in 2020 from 2019. And we originated 413 million of mortgages. So again, up from 2019. We contributed to two, two successful securitizations. And um, we've only got um, less than a, two handfuls of people still on payment holidays, which has been really, really good um, because most landlords have now repaid their COVID-19 payments. And again, the last point states there that um, we've got less than a handful of uh, delinquent mortgages. So in terms of fleet, we're in a really, really good position. We've worked overtime and at the weekends to help our brokers with mortgage applications and we've maintained the service levels despite all the staff working from home. We've not got anyone on furlough anymore and last year we've launched a lifetime product, a lifetime tracker product with no ERCs which has been very, very popular and we've repriced limited company products in, in line with our standard products. So whether you're an individual or a limited company, you will get the same rates um, on our product guide. So it's more simplified and easy to, easy to understand. Our purchase business increased from 24% up to 36% in 2020. And um, applications from limited companies have increased as well, up to 42% in 2020. So again, we've seen a lot more um, applications coming through from your portfolio landlords. So what are your goals and aspirations this year? Um, and how will you succeed in maximising the opportunity 2021 will offer your business? Well, there's going to be obstacles, as we've seen, and problems that we've seen um, this year. Um, but there's also a lot of opportunity in the specialist buy-to-let sector as it continues to grow. The mortgage market's buoyant, not just in our sector, but across the board. And we're incredibly lucky to be working in a sector that's open for business. And where a strong half of 2020 has set us up for a really positive outlook in 2021. And we should all be really, really grateful for the confidence and that it's clearly growing. Interest rates are more or less zero and probably going to stay that way for quite some time to come, if not years. And with low interest rates, investors still see bricks and mortar as offering the best return possible. Um, so demand's higher than supply and house prices are set to rise. There's several fixed rates of products coming to an end from the stamp duty land tax changes the last time round. And there's a massive opportunity in the mortgage market. Um, so since coming out of lockdown part one, um, there's been a significant increase in the number of products available on sourcing systems. But in times of uncertainty, uh, consumers are less likely to make long term commitments. And that will involve things like moving house and committing to bigger mortgages. And let's face it, with the lack of social housing policy here we've got in the UK, um, and, and the te as tenancy demand rises, people have to, have to live somewhere and generally they end up in the PRS. So it's really, really important for, um, the, for you guys to understand the changes, whether that's underwriting changes, whether that's um, new COVID-19 declaration forms, um, service levels, different lenders changing criteria. And a lot of our circumstances have changed throughout 2020. And I think everyone's been affected by COVID-19 in one way or another. Um, so again, with um, small business owners and furloughed employees, um, it's never a better time for these clients to be contacting a mortgage broker. So you are important and these people need you. So who are Fleet? So Fleet Mortgages are a team or a collection of experienced mortgage and professional uh, financial services professionals putting, the, uh, putting all our combined know-how into the venture. And we, be, but we believe that if we, we do things well, um, we will continue to build an impressive portfolio of buy-to-let mortgages. We aim to lend at competitive rates to people who can afford to pay us back, no more, no less. And that doesn't mean that we'll be the most expensive lender, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean that we'll be the cheapest either. So our processes lean heavily on the experience, which is a combination of automated credit tools and also underwriters who have been working with us for a number of years. Um, but we love mortgages and we're good at it. And we'll continually to re review products and, um, and, and our processes to be current, relevant and reflect the current market needs and be flexible and appropriate. 
and we want to build successful relationships with you so that we can keep you and your clients satisfied. So what I'm going to do now is just hand you over to Gio, who will um, talk to you a little bit about how Fleet Mortgages can help you and your clients um, with some of our criteria. Perfect. Thanks, Louisa. That was really good. Um, I'm Giovanna, Business Development Manager for Fleet Mortgages for the South. Um, some of you probably know me already and have spoken to me. Um, right, so going on to portfolio landlords. So five reasons why you should use Fleet Mortgages. So standard and limited company rental calculations are 125 at 5.5. Don't differentiate between um, higher rate or lower rate taxpayers. Um, there's no extra paperwork to complete. So we don't want to see cash flow forecasts, business plans, anything like that. Um, unlimited black background portfolio as well. Remember that we don't stress test the background portfolio. Um, so we need an assets and liability form, but we're not concerned with the background portfolio. That can be running 80, 90% loan to value. We're only concerned with the, the property that you're bringing to us. And you've got access to experienced portfolio underwriters as well, which is really, really good. Moving on to portfolio aggregate and exposure. Um, the next slide, please. Sorry, Louisa. Yes, yeah, so next one. So um, they can have, your clients can have as many properties, as many cases as they want with us. Um, they can't go beyond 5 million. So as many cases as they want, but not below, not above 5 million. Okay, and then we can now lend up to 75% loan to value, which is good. So first time landlords, first time landlords we accept. Remember first time buyers, we don't. So for a first time landlord, they have to be 25 years of age and they have to have a minimum income of 25,000. If they're an experienced landlord, remember that income is only 15K and that can be made up of earned income, pension, rental, or just one of those. So say for example, you've got somebody unemployed, all of rental income, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so first time landlords must be, um, they must have um, mortgage experience in the form of their resi. So moving on to um, day one remortgages. Did we miss one, Louisa? No, day one remortgages. Um, client, right, so day one remortgages, client with a bridging loan um, will accept day one remortgages against the new valuation. Remember that if they do a day one remo, we can do it straight away on the purchase price. If they've done substantial works to the property, we can always go on the open market value. We're gonna to need to see um, obviously like pictures, sometimes videos, invoices, um, but anything after six months, then that's fine. Okay, um, and consider for any purpose, excluding paying tax and gambling debts. I think that's on the next slide as well. Okay, yeah, so capital raising, they can capital raise for any legal purpose, as just mentioned, no um, gambling debts or personal tax bills. Um, things such as like other tax, so stamp duty land tax, that can be paid for, that can be capital raised for as well. They can extend their portfolio, business purposes, property refurbishments, anything apart from gambling debts and personal tax bills for capital raising. So moving on to HMOs, so they're valued on a room by room basis. We go up to six rooms. Um, watch this space though, bit of info for you there. Watch this space, we may be going up um, slightly higher on the rooms, um, but you will, be, you will be first to hear about that. Um, up to 75% loan to value. So minimum valuation um, outside London and the Southeast has to be the 100K. Um, and then for the HMOs um, within London and the Southeast, it's 150. Um, beginning of the year, we've just reduced our HMO landlord experience. So with Fleet, you um, you may not know this, but it was always two years before. Um, we, un we understand we have to come in line with um, our competitors. So we've brought that right down to the one year. So 12 months experience now needed for a HMO landlord. Okay, moving on to um, uh, multi-unit blocks. We'll take up to 10 units under one single freehold. Um, we can lend up to 75% loan to value, which is great. HMO lending criteria applies. And remember, we'll do it also on a uh, block by block basis as well. Sorry, a unit by unit basis. Um, as again, minimum valuations on that are the 100,000 outside London and Southeast, then 150 within London and the Southeast. So shared accommodation, um, get a lot of calls on this actually, it's really good because if it's got like, if you've got like four sharers and you've got like locks on doors, 
you know, we accept that, we accept the downstairs bedrooms, it's done on a room by room basis as well. It can be multiple ASTs, it can be a single AST. We don't ask for ASTs, so we're not concerned whether it's multiple or single on there. And remember as well, on the shared accommodation, maximum four occupants, they can get it under standard products as well. So um, it, that includes a free valuation up to 500,000 with us and then discounted thereafter, which is really, really good. Moving on to ex-local authority. Um, so we have, oh no, I think I've got the wrong one. Have we done that already, Louisa, SPV? Ignore me, I've got the wrong slides here in front of me. Right, so 75% to a million lend, 70% loan to value, um, up to 1.5 million, um, and can be done for higher rate tax pay, higher rate legacy planning and protection. So new existing and subsidiaries, SPVs as well. Remember that we do take SPV subsidiaries off. So that's that's one to bear in mind as well. Um, and as I said before, the 125 at 5.5, everything's calculated at that. Um, and then you've got the pay rate products as well. Um, limited company is four applicants. So if you've got three directors, one shareholder, one director, three shareholders, they can all go on the application, but it is a maximum of four that we allow. We also allow limited company incorporations as well. Um, what's really good also is that the intercompany and director loans, the calculator, honestly, just use the OEZ calculator online and then you'll get the figure on there and it will tell you. It's really simple online. Here's the ex-local authority. So we've lowered the minimum value for the ex-local authority properties um, for London and the South East. It's now 75,000. Um, properties inside London and London and the South East is still 150,000. So that's been lowered. Seeing a lot of those at the moment. So um, minimum property, yes, yeah, so 50,000. So fleet mortgages have reduced its minimum property valuation to 50,000, subject to 70% loan to value. Remember that anything under 75,000 or 74,999 is always 70% loan to value. Anything above that, we can go to 75% loan to value. Flats with deck access, this is what I was going to go on to um, with the ex-local. So with the deck access, we are fine with deck access, balcony access, there's no minimum, it doesn't need to be, I don't know, like 80% council owned if it's council or anything like that, we, or privately owned, we're absolutely fine. There's no actual percentage. Um, we'll go up to five stories um, outside London, but within the M25, it's up to 10. Um, not in the market for a high rise or anything like that, but we do go up to 10 and it's 70% loan to value, remember, on the ex-local, the deck access properties. Properties next door, we're absolutely fine. A lot, lot of lenders, I find, been in this industry for a long, long time now, show my age, um, I find that if you go to some lenders, they're like, oh no, risk of knock through. We're not gonna do that, we're not interested. We don't see it as risk of knock through. So say for example, you know, subject to exposure limits, if you've got like three in a road and then your applicant wants to buy them, it's absolutely fine. If they're next door to each other, the applicant's resi can even be one side and then they can buy either side on a buy to let. We're absolutely fine with that. Must be separate applications if they're under separate freeholds, but yeah, that's fine. So freeholder leaseholder connections. Um, so we do allow freeholder leaseholder connections. I've got a whole list of loads of examples because I'm seeing more and more of these. So they're more and more common. So I've literally put some information down here. So examples of freeholder leaseholder connections could be one of them after completing the build, a property developer sells off the majority of flats in the block, but chooses to retain one or more as an investment for themselves. We'll class that as freeholder leaseholder connections. Um, another one that's really popular is where the freehold is owned by a family member, often the parent and the flats on leasehold titles owned by their children. In all case, cases, we'll insist on a first legal charge of the freehold of the property. Okay, so we must take that, but we do, and we lend on a maximum of the one flat, but we do do freeholder leaseholder connections. Always give me a call or your BDM a call um, or, or the line, but I'm conscious that I'm probably running over. So I'm gonna be quiet now, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right down. That's all right. We've got lots of time. That's fine. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Really good. A um, couple of bits I took out there, which were brilliant with regards to the um, remortgaging from a bridging loan, which is great. And also the, the sneak preview of possibly the, um, the six bedroom with HMOs. You heard it here Coming first. Up. Yeah. Um, just a few questions, please. So 
Um, first of all, what are your views? I mean, this is a big part and a big topic in the industry at the moment. What's your views with regards to cladding at the moment on properties? So, okay, any so go on, go on. <laughs> Yeah, you, you <laughs> I was going to say anything with clad in, anything that it requires the EWS1 form, then sadly our funders are just not interested at the moment. So anything with clad in, um, we would just say no to. Okay, that clears that one up. I remember, audience, there is a QA button at the bottom there. We've probably got about seven or eight minutes left. Um, so if you want to get your questions, do that quickly, please. Another one has come in. Do you lend in Scotland? If not, can you see this happening in the future? Well, being Scottish, I would love to be able to answer that and say yes. Um, but yeah, unfortunately not at the moment. Um, so uh, possibly in the future, if I've got anything to do with it, yeah, then yes, I would love to say yes. <laughs> You'll get your but, way, yeah. brilliant. <laughs> um, what's the funder's view on the buy-to-let sector in the moment and, or in 2021 and, and beyond? What's their views at the moment? Yeah, so I'll take that one as well. Um, I would say that the funder's view of is very positive towards the UK buy-to-let market, given the macroeconomic backdrop. Um, I think they see the growth in the sector as the tenancy demand rises. Um, we've already seen um, our friends Keystone and Lenco complete their first ever securitizations this year. So that shows confidence from investors that the UK buy-to-let market is a solid grown market. Um, and discussions with fleet funders remain positive and we're constantly working with them to improve criteria, um, as um, Gio just mentioned there. Um, and that provides customer better customer outcomes in general. So, yeah, very, very positive there. That's good. And I can only see that increasing as the restrictions relax. Yeah. Um, what about um, any adverse? Do you accept anything historic? Gio, do you want to say that? We don't, yeah, we don't scream and shout that we're an adverse lender, but we can take a view towards certain things. Um, any defaults, either settled or CCJ settled or unsettled over 36 months ago, we just disregard. So they can be settled, okay. unsettled in the thousands, we disregard. If it's within the last three years, anything on a status two and over 250, we will just say no to. Okay, a couple of like utility bills, things like that. If it's just like a couple of missed payments or late payments, we can take a view on those. Brilliant. That's really good to know. Thank you for that. Um, on the product guide, you stand your know, standard rates and pay rates. What's the difference, and when would you use them? Yeah. So if you if you find that on the calculator your client can't get the desired loan on our standard calculations of one two five at five point five, you can have a look at pay rate products under the five year fixed only. So they start at three point four four. So rather than one two five at five point five. It's 3.44, it's worked out on, and you'll find that you can maximise the client's borrowing that way and they can get a lot more with us. It's really good, really good to know. And obviously a maximum loan in current climates is uh, it's a huge entity. Um, as we speak, stamp duty land tax is probably being extended. Um, what are your views on this post stamp duty land tax um, discounts? Yeah, so I don't see any dis d decrease in the buy to let purchase activity once the stamp duty land tax holiday finally comes to an end whenever that will be um, but I would expect it to remain relatively stable um, and also with thousands of five-year fixed rates coming to an end I expect an, an, an increase in the remortgage business this year and um, what I would say is that demand for rental property by um, returning to the market, they're growing their portfolios. So advisors are likely to get involved in a lot of buy to let business this year. Um, what I would say is very key here is when it comes to choosing the right lender for their landlord customers, criteria, speed and service are going to be key considerations um, going forward. So, um, you know, obviously, think Philippe if you need the, if you feel the need for speed. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Just while you're talking about that, how are you finding um, valuers accessing properties? Is it okay? Are people very hesitant to let people, um, you know, strangers into their properties at the moment? I'm fine. Yeah, I mean, go on, go for it. <laughs> yeah, go for it, Gio. I'm finding that it, it's fine. I mean, it, it, you know, thank God that they can still go out and they can still value properties. Um, obviously, it needs to be empty and things like that. I have come across a couple of cases where, okay, customers are shielding and the actually, yeah, the Apple um, people living in there, that they're shielding. So it's kind of like, okay, what do they do? But, you know, yeah. we've always come to some arrangement and we use Gateway, our surveyors. They're fantastic. If they can't gain access, they'll let us know. We'll try and sort something out. But I am finding that it's not as bad as it was last year 
than it is this year. So, so it's better, better this year. What were you going to say, Louisa? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to say that, yeah, it's obviously as hard when people are shielding or people have got COVID and things like that. So there is going to be some delays, of obviously, getting into uh, and getting into and accessing properties. But um, all in the whole, um, we haven't seen that much of a delay now. Um, everything's getting processed pretty smoothly. It's the delays with the the, the solicitors and the conveyancers that that, <laughs> that are holding things up, and the removal companies post sale as well. I believe um, there's quite a big queue for um, removal companies. So yeah. Yeah, sure. And with that, with that in mind as well, I just had a question come in. Are you finding surveyors are undervaluing properties for remortgages? Gio, do you want to take that? I've, I've not experienced that. I'm not really finding that. Yes, I get the odd one, um, but, um, and they don't, last year there was a lot of okay due to the current climate. They're not really putting that on there at the moment. I'm not finding a lot of down valuations, um, even on the rental income. And remember, we do the room by room basis as well and things like that. So you can always get like higher, higher rental valuations, but I'm not finding, I'm not finding that. Okay, yeah, a couple now and again, but not, <laughs> not a lot. <laughs> Okay, cool. And then just, I think you mentioned SLAs earlier on. Do you just want to re reconfirm those again? What are your uh, service level agreements at the moment? So, yeah, as I mentioned before, if you feel the need for speed with fleets, um, it's 24 hour turnaround or same day turnaround on duplication, uh, duplication, d dips, applications, and document uploads. So, um, and we've maintained that throughout. I think over the Christmas period, we slipped below a little bit and it was only, I think, 72 hours. But if you want a quick answer, come to fleet. Brilliant. Yeah, can't emphasize that enough. It's so, it's so quick at the moment, really quick. Good stuff. And we're just running out of time, so I think we'll wrap it up there. So thank you very much for your presentation, really informative. And thank you, audience, for watching. Remember the impact of one of the um, approved packages to deal with fleets, and we have a dedicated um, team that look after our cases. So um, give us a call on the usual number, 01403 27 26 25. You want to talk to one of my team, and I will be more than happy to assist you. Thanks again for watching. Keep safe, and we'll see you soon.